Well, everyone, it's that time of the year again where MLB Network is going to straight up gaslight us and lie to all of our faces about who they think the top 100 players in baseball are. And I can prove that because if you take a look at their 100 to 91, we're just going to start the video right now because it's just so annoying. You can see that they put Matt McClain as the 99th best player in baseball. I have no problem with that. I think that Matt McClain is insane. But if you take a look at their top 10 second baseman, they left off Ozzy Albies. So they don't have Ozzy Albies in their top 10. They have Matt McClain in their top 10. But if you take a look they have Matt McClain as the 99th best player and Ozzy Albies as the 64th best player how can you not be a top 10 second baseman but then be ranked like 33 spots ahead of a second baseman that's in the top 10 another example literally right in front of you Josh Naylor is ranked ahead of Tristan Casas even though Tristan Casas made the top 10 first baseman and Josh Naylor was completely left off do they think we're stupid? But before I get too annoyed, let me take a quick deep breath and ask a favor of you guys. We are so close to 500,000 subs. It would mean the world to me. Join the team. We're so, so close. All right, let's go back to that 100 to 99. So we have Ellie De La Cruz, Matt McClain, Nathaniel Lowe, Tristan Casas, Josh Naylor, Royce Lewis, Gabriel Moreno, Cal Raleigh, Dylan Cease, and Nathan Avaldi. In my humble opinion, I feel like Ellie De La Cruz probably should have been left off. I know his ceiling is really high, but I'm going to go ahead and spoil it right now. They left off Glaber Torres entirely. MLB Network does not think that Glaber is a top 100 player, but they had to put on Ellie De La Cruz. Again, these are for clicks. They're trying to make you mad, and it's just kind of annoying. Maybe you don't have a problem with any of the other picks, or maybe you think that Royce Lewis is a little bit too low. Gabriel Moreno, he showed a lot of promise. In my opinion, the rest of these guys... I guess it's fine. All right, moving on over to 90 through 81. We have Jordan Montgomery, Matt Chapman, Hasiem Kim, Nolan Jones. Look at Nolan Jones making the top 87. Anthony Santander, JD Martinez, Seiya Suzuki, Marcelo Zuna, Wilson Contreras, and William Contreras. And the crazy part is this little graphic came out, I think a week or two ago. Montgomery, Chapman, and Martinez are all still free agents. Hey, Scott Boris. Can you cut it out, please? Now, I do have a few objections with some of these picks. I don't think that Seiya Suzuki is worse than Wilson Contreras. What Seiya Suzuki did in the second half of last year was absolutely insane. And maybe I'm a Nolan Jones fanboy or I'm a Ha Seung Kim fanboy, but I would probably take those guys before Wilson Contreras, although Wilson was pretty good in the second half as well. But I think we can all agree he's not better than his brother. But William, I think he's ranked too low. He was insane last year. 81 to me is a little bit disrespectful. Wow, they put Edwin Diaz in the top 80. And honestly, I don't have a problem with that. I just thought that maybe they would leave him out considering a lot of these rankings, they really take into account injury concerns. So I felt like maybe he would be left out, but no, he's in there. And when I say injury concerns, wait till we get to the top 12 players. It gets crazy. So they have Edwin Diaz at 80, followed by Max Muncy at 79. Now, I know Max Muncy is a home run king, but to me, he is not better than a lot of the guys that we showed from 90 to 81. I don't think Max Muncy is bad by any means, but let's continue on. Isaac Paredes, I really like him. I feel like he deserves to be in the top 80 after last year. His teammate, Josh Lowe. We have George Springer, George Kirby, Tyler Glasnow, Kyle Bradish, Christian Yelich, and Brian Reynolds. Now, me personally, I think that Christian Yelich was better than Brian Reynolds last year, and considering Yelich's past, I'd probably put him ahead of Brian Reynolds, but I still think that Reynolds is really good. George Kirby ahead of Tyler Glasnow. This might shock you guys, but after after the injury concerns of Tyler Glasnow, he kind of regressed last year. I think I'd go George Kirby over Tyler Glasnow and even Springer. He's been a little bit shaky lately. Th this is not looking good. Moving on over to the top 70 club, we have Brandon Nimmo, JP Crawford, Carlos Correa is now bottom 68. Okay, Dansby Swanson, Ozzy Albies, Gatel Marte, Justin Steele, Kodai Senga, Justin Verlander, and... Yamamoto is ahead of Kodai Senga and Justin Steele. These lists are so confusing. I don't know if they care more about ceilings. I don't know if they care more about injury concerns and how much they've played in the past or how well they've done recently. What's the criteria? Now, me personally, I'm going to favor a positional player over a pitcher every single day of the week. So if you're asking me, I would probably move up Brandon Nemo because that guy's very underrated as well. I would move up Ozzy Albies and Ketel Marte ahead of guys like Justin Steele and Verlander, but that's no disrespect to those two guys or even just the pitching position in general. I just think that I get more value out of a guy who plays 150 plus games as opposed to a guy who has 30 starts. Maybe that's just me, but that's my opinion. All right, moving on over to the top 60 players in baseball, according to MLB Network. A reminder, these are not my rankings. Please do not get mad at me if you don't agree with them. So they have Josh Hader and Devin Williams. What the... F 
What was that? You know the list is bad when the baseball gods are literally trying to prevent you from recording. I don't know what just happened there. All right, let's just restart the top 60. So we have Josh Hader and Devin Williams. So they're grouping a lot of positions together from what I've noticed. Then they have Christian Walker, Kyle Schwarber. I love Kyle Schwarber and his home runs, but he's not better than Christian Walker. I'm sorry. To me, I feel like Christian Walker gets disrespected. He is a gold glove first baseman every single year, and he is guaranteed to hit 30 home runs with like 40 doubles. He's insane, and I don't know why he's always so low. After Kyle Schwarber, it's Pablo Lopez, Framber Valdez, Luis Castillo, Xander Bogarts, who is now a second baseman, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., and Cody Bellinger. I think a lot of people are going to be upset at the fact that Vladdy is top 52 because despite the fact that I think that he was unlucky last year, they point to his 113 or something, 117 OPS plus, and they're probably going to take a guy like Christian Walker over Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And honestly, going into 2024, I think I could even say that Christian Walker is a better first baseman right now than Vladdy. But where it gets confusing is I still think that Vladdy has a higher ceiling so maybe they're using ceilings as well that's why these rankings are so confusing they don't give us a criteria they just say here's the graphic here's the rankings now talk about it and get mad so cody bellinger just misses out on the top 50 who's ahead of him we have michael harris i will give michael harris that because he has been a dog in his first few seasons i mean i love sunny gray and max freed i'm still taking michael harris ahead of those guys i'm doing it he's an insane base runner defender he's got a cannon he hits for contact and he's a power hitter as well sometimes he's a true five tool athlete i'm taking that guy over a pitcher every single day again no disrespect to pitchers but let's move on sean murphy jt romuto will smith alex bregman Luis Arise, Logan Webb, and Kevin Gosman. I love Alex Bregman. He kind of bounced back last year. I probably would go with Michael Harris before Alex Bregman. What do you guys make of Logan Webb being ahead of someone like Luis Arise or a Michael Harris? I really think that Logan Webb is a very underrated pitcher. I almost consider him to be the Christian Walker of pitchers because not a lot of people outside of his own team talk about Logan Webb or a Christian Walker and I don't understand why because they're so so good but yeah that's 50 through 41 do you guys have any objections uh it's about to get real weird all right the top 40 we have Randy that mother fudger a Rosarena we have Adolis Garcia Yandy Diaz Pete Alonzo, Paul Goldschmidt, Bo Bichette, Gunnar Henderson, Nolan Arnato, Raphael Devers, and Zach Gallen. And this is where it gets really confusing to me because Nolan Arnato, he had a big step back last year. Paul Goldschmidt, he regressed as well. Where someone like Adolis Garcia, I mean, he took the world on by storm. He put the Rangers on his back, not only defensively and the batter's box. I love Pete Alonzo, and I think it's right to put him right behind Paul Goldschmidt. Gunnar Henderson at 34 seems a little bit low. Raphael Devers at 32 behind Zach Gallen. I... I love Zach Gallon. I think I would still go Rafael Devers before him. Ooh, we have Luis Robert Jr. as the front player on this graphic. So we have Blake Snell making the top 30. We have Corbin Burns ahead of him. And by the way, Blake Snell at the time of this recording, also still a free agent, just like Cody Bellinger. You saw it just at FA. Wow, so even though Zach Wheeler has never won a Cy Young, they have Cy Young winners behind him in Corbin Burns and Blake Snell. Moving on, we have Luis Robert Jr. I agree with him being in the top 30 because his ceiling is basically unlimited. He just has to stay healthy. The same story for Fernando Tatis Jr., but when will people learn that Fernando Tatis Jr. is still a top 15, borderline top 10 talent in the game? He doesn't need steroids to be good, and I hope that he showed that last year. Francisco Lindor at 25. I don't like that. Manny Machado, Kyle Tucker, Jose Altuve, and Marcus Simeon. Francisco Lindor at 25 is certainly a choice, and a choice I wouldn't have made. Why is he at 25? He's definitely a top 20, top 15 player in baseball. I know you guys are going to comment on this, so let's address the elephant in the room already. 20 to 11, we're going to fast forward to 12 real quick because for the first time since I was in high school, Mike Trout, according to MLB Network, is not a top 1, 3, 5, or 10 baseball player. He was ranked at 12. So 20 to 11, we have Bobby Wood Jr. and Ali Rutschman. I'm happy that they're in the top 20. Corbin Carroll, Spencer Strider, Trey Turner. And that's why I have an issue with Francisco Lindor being at 25. To me, he's been better than Trey Turner. Trey Turner had that explosive second half where the crowd cheered him on and he was great after that. But Lindor... He's been him for a while now. You have Austin Riley just behind J-Ram. As a biased Guardians fan, I agree with that. But Austin Riley and Jose Ramirez, they're kind of 1A and 1B. Then you have Matt Olson outside the top 10 and just behind Mike Trout and Bryce Harper. And again, 
That's why I'm confused. Bryce Harper, it's not like he's played every single game over the last few seasons. He had that UCL injury, and then a lot of people are saying Mike Trout, the reason why he's 12 is because, yeah, he's talented, but he cannot stay on the field, and the best ability is availability. I'm not saying that you guys are wrong, but if you're looking me dead in my face and you're telling me that there's five to six better baseball players than Mike Trout, I'm sorry, you're just lying to yourself. Mike Trout had a 134 WRC plus last year, the lowest of his entire career, that was still higher than J-Rod's last year. So do you guys have any objections with 20 to 11? To me, Bryce Harper seems a little bit low as well. Uh, yeah, uh, let's just keep going, I guess. All right, so the top 10, we're gonna go one by one. At number 10, we have J-Rod, Julio Rodriguez, and I'm cool with J-Rod being pretty high because he does everything at an elite level. He runs well, he throws well, he defends well with the glove, he can hit for contact. I mean, he does have the MLB record for the most base hits in a four game span. I think he had 17 base hits over four games. So whatever you need from a baseball player, J-Rod is gonna give you. Is he better than Mike Trout? To me, no, but I don't have a problem with him being ranked this high. This is where my positional player versus pitcher perspective comes in because even though I love Garrett Cole, he finally got his side young, I'm still taking Mike Trout over Garrett Cole. Now, again, I'm happy that guys like Spencer Strider and Garrett Cole, they're getting their recognition. They're in the top 20. I'm just not taking Cole over Trout. I'm not doing it. And is it bad to say that I would also take Mike Trout over Jordan Alvarez, who they have at number eight? Jordan is probably the best hitter on this list, but when you include the all-around aspects of baseball, running, defense, Mike Trout is still top 4% in speed, and he was insane defensively last year. I love Jordan. I'm still taking Trout. I'm sorry. Wow, they don't think that Juan Soto is a top five player. I know there's some really good players, but I feel like Juan Soto is very, very good. So, I mean, there's not really much to talk about. Let's go on to number six. Corey Seager is at number six ahead of Juan Soto, despite the fact that he almost missed 50 games last year. To me, it's kind of hard to compare Juan Soto and Corey Seager because obviously Juan, he's going to get on base at a higher clip. Corey Seager, he's going to have the better batting average and the defense because he's just simply a better athlete than Juan Soto. We have back-to-back -back Dodgers coming up. So we have Freddie Freeman at number five and at number four, I thought it was going to be Mookie Betts. I'm cool with Freddie Freeman being in the top 10. I don't think I would rank him at number five. I'll tell you guys my top five in just a second, but Shohei Otani at number four. Again, what's the criteria? Why isn't there a little asterisk on these graphics saying that injury concerns is baked in because we know that Otani, he is going to be a DH in 2024. But again, maybe this is blasphemy. I think that Jordan Alvarez is a better hitter than Shohei Otani. Shohei was insane last year. Cannot take anything away from him, but as a straight up Hitter, I'm going to take Jordan. So according to my metrics, Otani should be a little bit lower based off MLB baking in injuries and everything into these rankings. But I'm not going to do that because I'm not trying to get rage baits. I'm just trying to get these right. Maybe I'm just a sucker for nostalgia and I'm thinking about everything that Otani has done for the game of baseball and I refuse to let an injury not have him as my number one baseball player, but let's see who they have as their number one. Just ahead of the unicorn, we have Aaron Judge at number three. I don't agree with that at all. Let's just keep it moving because I'm about to get frustrated. Mookie Betts at two and Ronald Acuna Jr. at the number one spot. Um, That's not my top five. So let me recap the top 10 because I feel like we went through that fairly quick. So we have J-Rod at 10, Garrett Cole at nine, Jordan at eight, Soto at seven, Corey Seager at six, Freeman and Otani at five and four, Aaron Judge at number three, Mookie Betts at two, and then Ronald Acuna Jr. as the best player in baseball going into 2024. And I guess I have to give the caveat, even though they didn't tell us themselves, the reason why Shohei is at number four and Mike Trout is at number 12 is injury concerns. That's the best guesstimate that I have in me trying to assume. So there you go. Yet again, we have subjected ourselves to an arbitrary and random rankings courtesy of MLB Network. I don't know what their criteria is. I don't know if they care more about clicks and engagement over getting it right. So what do you guys think? Make sure you guys subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.